Okay, good morning, everybody. Everybody's well. Happy Monday. Happy President's Day for those that are celebrating federal holidays from the United States of America. It's amazing how, depending on where you are in the corporate world, these holidays mean very differently to you. I think when you're working sort of as an entrepreneur, these aren't real holidays, they're just carpool days. Her growing up, I used to love these days. Are you kidding me? Federal holidays for those who work in corporate America, man, best. Best. It's an honor to be with you again. We've been talking a lot about this concept of what we're defining as royalty, spiritual royalty, which is a deepening of our perspective, of our relationships, not because we're guaranteed a timeline of feeling better because that's the way we should live our lives. It's a very, I tell you, it's very freeing when we start doing things that are right, expecting nothing in return. It's super hard. I'm not there, but it's freeing. We get to just be right or we get to do right. I don't know if we're going to be right. We get to do right. And then it starts coming back whenever it comes back and it's a whole nother life. Today, I want to go into a, a concept that is, it seems very simple. This happens every once in a while. It happens all the time, right? I think. But it's something that I think is really hard. We may have touched on this before here, but it is very much aligned with the idea of seeing spiritual. Now, I don't remember the details of this. I remember reading a Harry Potter book. I don't remember, and I'm sure there are people that have read more. I read the first one, I think. It came out and went one crazy. And I remember I was on vacation somewhere and the person had a copy and I just sort of like went into it and it was amazing, I thought. I said, well, I wanted to see the hype. So I, I don't remember much about the book, although there were some cool things in that book and that series and J.K. Rowling's, her whole story. I did. I think I'd spent more time on J.K. Rowling's story. Her, she was homeless and how she started. I, I spent more time on her trying to figure out her greatness than on the book. But either way, there was a piece of the book that was very interesting. And again, for the Harry Potter uh, fans, you're going to you know cringe that I don't get this. But for those who are just familiar with the story at all, so Harry Potter is this kid who like in the being doesn't know himself and he ends up being really like, like, you know, the Messiah, if you will, that that's that same story. It's a very, it's a very similar storyline that takes place in lots of movies and books. Look at, look, look into the work of Joseph Campbell and you'll see the mythology is massive. It comes to the Messiah concept. So he's like the Messiah doesn't know himself and he has this, his parents are gone orphans. Basically in the beginning of this book, he ends up going to this, um, the school where he gets to find himself. So he goes to the train station and he can't find the train because I think it's on the platform of like, like five and a half or something. Andy, keep on filling me with what's really going on. Nine and three quarters. Good. Of course, Andy knows that. Just for the record, for those that are watching this live, I said five and a half and it was less than two nanoseconds and it popped up nine and three quarters. That's the greatness of... Mr. Andy Baldax. I got a new cup, by the way, for those who are worried about my cup that broke. Rifka got it before him. Good job, Rifka. For those who are worried about my mug, my wonderful wife ordered me a new one. Thank God for Amazon. And then told it, and it's back. I'm back. I feel like I'm, I'm complete again. My normal mug. When you start drinking coffee out of glass, I shouldn't let you know. For those who are drink coffee drinkers, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not a coffee drinker, you think I'm insane. If you drink coffee out of glass, you cannot drink it out of any other cup. It's impossible. It's impossible. Right. The blue dairy sticker. Thank you for those who are paying attention to my blue dairy sticker. <laughs> we should do a we should do one one morning just on drinking coffee out of the right substance and how glass is the only way to drink a cup of coffee. So Harry Potter goes to nine and three quarters. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you. So Harry Potter goes to um to not to, to to the platform 
and he can't find it because it's between nine and 10 and he's got to wait for nine and three quarters. And then at some point, nine and three quarters opens up and he's able to go into this magical train to take him to the magical place. Now I remember reading that. And I remember after that page, like just stopping and trying to understand the insight of that one thing. What was the author trying to get at? Why couldn't Harry Potter just get on a regular train? Right? He has to run into a brick wall. And the answer, I believe, is because the real greatness, the secrets of life take place between the platforms. Life really is between the platforms. You want to understand somebody, it's between the words and what they're saying. That's one of the great challenges of the world that we live in right now. I once heard a talk given by the great Dr. David Pelkovitz. He spoke about this idea of mirror, mirror neurons and how really what's happening when you're talking to somebody live is that your brain is firing off mirror neurons and the other person's firing mirror neurons. So you're just talking, but the real connection that takes place between two people talking has nothing to do with the words you say. It's the space between the words that you say. And when you text, it's a great way to communicate, but you're missing most of the glue, which is why relationships have changed so dramatically, because there's a change in empathy, it's a change of connection, because so much of our time is spent mirror neuron, mirror, with our mirror neurons firing against the screen, not against the human being. In the world of Torah, there's a concept called the white fire in the black fire. If you look at a scroll, a Torah scroll, it's parchment and there's black letters. And the rabbis teach us that the black letters are holy, but the white letters, which are the spaces in between the letters are even holier. White fire. The energy between the words the connection of silence that takes place between two people. That's where the, that's where the magic happens. Nine and three quarters. You got to run in between the platforms. Now think about the most powerful moments you've had in your life. Probably it's in between your daily activities. Probably it's the time in which things stopped. And you had to do things that you don't typically do. And those become the sweetest. For some people, the blessing of the virus, of course, there's a lot of negativity, but the blessing of the virus was they had to live in the white fire. I know a lot of people that when they go on vacation or when they, they think about their weekends, the things that are the most valuable to them are the quiet moments. The moments before the world gets up, the moments after the world goes to sleep, the moments when they are having a mundane conversation with somebody. These are the moments that are the ones that feel different. And we don't get a lot of them because as soon as they start to come in our day, the, the barrage of words, and images that come at us keep the platforms running. The trains always run. It's these, it's the nine and three quarters, so to speak. It's the, it's the between the raindrops. That's really where the magic happens. By the way, that's why for those that are practicing Shabbat, you know what that means. And it's not even the whole Shabbat. That's only if you do it like at the highest level. Usually it's the beginning of Shabbat you st or the morning. You start to realize that, wait, I'm in a different space. I'm in between the platforms. I'm not on Friday. I'm not on Sunday. I'm in a different world. Now, if you, if you, if you slow, if you, if you sort of like 
if we try if we try to understand how we get between the raindrops how do you live in the white fire how do you live right this is what we're talking about the spiritual lens the secret is that the spiritual lens is in front of you the entire time the way you tap into the depth is not by doing something different this is a huge i believe misconception running away from your world to find something deeper usually doesn't work it's important to go places that can maybe get you to a deeper place within yourself but it's just not in the tradition that i was taught that the way you find depth is by running away from your world <clears throat> just not the spirituality that I was taught. If that would be the case, God would find depth in the, in the angelic spheres. He doesn't. He finds depth in the human spheres. All the depth that we want in life is right before our eyes. We just can't see it. Just like our brains can't pick up on the Wi-Fi frequency because we're not built for it. The Wi-Fi is right there. And the device that we have, the, 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 the dumb phone that you have in your hand doesn't pick up on Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is right there. It's the fact that we can't pick up on the spirituality that's in front of our eyes because we don't know how to tap into its frequency. And the frequency of the spiritual world operates at a different pace than the physical world. The reason why we can't tap into the frequency isn't because we don't have the ability to. The reason why we can't tap into the frequency is because our speed doesn't let us to. We are moving too fast. Our brain is moving too fast. And based on neuroplasticity, because our brains are conditioned to need a hit of stimuli every nanosecond, as soon as we stop being stimuli, stimulated, our brain goes, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I'm in the car and I have like open road. Like I got to do something else. Like what phone call can I make? I'm online and there's four people in front of me online. Like, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? I got to bring my phone. I got to bring my phone. I got to bring my phone because what if I go somewhere and I got to wait for two minutes and I don't got my phone on me. You know what I could be doing during that period of time? You know what kind of work I can be getting done? And by the way, I live this. That's how I know this. I am this person. I am the worst at this. I cannot drive in a, in a car. I can't without having a half a dozen phone calls that are already scheduled for me to make. Because I'm like, what am I going to do? To sit in a car for an hour? Like, what's going to... I can't do anything. I can't do anything. I can't walk around my house and clean a room if I don't have something in my ears. <laughs> Thank you. Ellie Sheva just posted. You can listen to, to my podcast. I appreciate that. I wonder if we can accept that rule, but I don't think we can. But thank you. This is our life. This is the world. Come on, keep it moving. We, 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 we huff and puff. You know what life is like? Life is like being a New Yorker walking in the streets of Manhattan. For those who are listening that have never been to Manhattan before, during the pre-COVID era, I want to give you an experience that you probably shouldn't do. It's not worth the money. But if you're ever in New York, it is worth it when the city, I, well, I don't know if I, the city comes back to normal. Right now, the city is a shadow of itself. Right now, the city is an unbelievable display of how quickly you can bring to the knees the greatest, strongest physical city in the world. But if you've ever done this before, go to New York City in Times Square on a regular, regular morning and take a walk. You will get barreled over. New Yorkers in the city on a regular morning don't walk. They half jog. It's like a treadmill when you know you go on the treadmill and like you walk and then you pick it up. Then you, 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 you raise the level until like you're not really walking and not really jogging. You're like half and half. You know that feeling where like you really should jog, but you're not jogging, but you're not walking. You know, like you're walking so fast that you're sweating. That walk is how a normal New Yorker walks every single day of their life. 
They're playing a video game, bobbing and weaving through people, trying to get to the office in 16 minutes, trying to time the train schedule and the office schedule. And if somebody who is a tourist who happens to be in time, but in Times Square, looking up at the building, as you see that tourist one block away, you're like, I got to get away from that person. They're like, you're like allergic to that person. You will, you will watch them get barreled over the sea of New Yorkers will barrel you over because that's how the brain works. And we're like that wherever you are, wherever you are, if you're not intentionally going against it, your brain is clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking. And when you click at a frequency that's faster, there is no room for the soul. The soul doesn't operate like that. You can't see it when you go too fast. If you move the scope of your gun too fast, back and forth and back and forth, you cannot pinpoint your target. If you run up and down a court, you cannot find the net. It just doesn't work. The, the pathway, the frequency, the way you tap into the energy of the spiritual world is when we slow down. Not our speech necessarily or our our feet necessarily, our minds. We slow our minds down. And you live in between the raindrops. As your mind speeds up, there is this like, and for those that have this, you know what I'm talking about. For those that don't, just, you know, give us a second. For those that have that feeling of, I got to do, I got to do, I got to accomplish, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I got to do, I got to do, I got to do, I got to do, I got to become, I got to become. For those who live in that space, that consistent space of I'm not enough, I got to be more, I got to go do more, I got to do more, I got to do more. It's great, but it's very dangerous because in that space, you can run the risk of never going deeper. When all the accomplishments that mean anything in life are deeper. The running mentally is blocking us from a spiritual relationship with the world, which is not shocking that when you run mentally, the only thing that gives us pleasure is more physical consumption, which is then what gives the world the ability to have us consume more, which then makes us run more, which just make us, makes us only get physical consumption, and then round and round we go, right? The physical consumption is, based, is basically building a certain pace of movement, which then only allows us for more physical consumption, and we don't even know why. And the main reason isn't because there's anything wrong with us. And the main reason isn't because we don't have a soul and we don't want this stuff. We want it badly. The reason why we can't find it is because it's a different frequency. The life we want is nine and three quarters. It is in between the platforms of our lives. Maybe what we want most is in between our daily activities. And we can't see it because we're so focused on getting our daily activities done. We're so focused on keeping ourselves entertained and stimulated that we don't give our minds the ability to slow down, to tap in to a deeper frequency. We don't sit in a conversation to recognize that the person before me has something deeper than the actual words in which they're saying. We don't look in their eyes. Our relationship to the world is too quick. And I am not advocating for us to talk slow, act slow, and be a turtle. We got to figure out a way to do both, which hopefully we'll explore together. All right, everybody. Have an incredible day. Try this today. Pick something. You know what? I'm going to give you homework today. And, I, and with God's help, Lena, I'll do it too. How about this? We'll do it together. Here's what I want, want, I want to 
I want to challenge everybody with for one mo minute today. Yes, the tortoise does beat the hare. That's true. For one minute today, when your brain says, stimulate me, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, and keeps just don't listen. Resist once and allow yourself to live in the silence, even for a minute. Hold the line, right, Michael? Hold the line. Just try for a little bit today to resist the mental pressure to be overstimulating ourselves. We're going to condition ourselves to live in between the raindrops. All right, everybody. Have an awesome day with God's help. I can't wait to see you again tomorrow.